I'll just pin it to one sec. Hello, everybody. Alpha Namaste. You want to move that thing? That's too bad. All right, so we go live now. Atma Namaste, everybody. Atma Namaste, guys. So, shall we start with a short prayer? Kindly close your eyes, connect down to the palate. Inhale and exhale. Feel yourself in the presence of the teacher, in the presence of Grand Master Chua. Lord Mahaguruji Mailing, all the great teachers and masters of Theosophy and the Supreme Being. To the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, we humbly invoke for your great, great blessings, for your light, for your love, for your mercy, for your guidance, all through our session. To our beloved and respected teacher, Grand Master Chokok, sweet to Lord Mahaguruji Mailing, to Buddha Kwanian, Buddha Sakyamuni, Gautama Buddha, to the Lord Christ, to Lord Yehoswa Bamirian, to Lord Shiva, Lord Ganesha, all the angels, the great teachers and masters of theosophy, the angels and beings of knowledge, light and power. To the angels of communication, our respective internets and Wi-Fi, to our soul and divine self, we humbly ask for your great, great blessings, for your light, for your love, for your mercy, for your tremendous patience to help us have a greater and deeper understanding of these priceless teachings. To have and to be motivated to use these teachings to become better instruments to do your work, to become better instruments to help manifest your plan on earth. We thank you in full faith, with gratitude, respect and love, we thank you. Feel the energy coming into you, inhale and exhale, relax the body. Atma Namaste. Welcome to today's session. We're moving on to um, chapter two. We finished a couple of paragraphs and so we move further into the chapter. We finished a few pages. Yes. <laughs> Let's go. I hope you guys are reading the book. You should, you know, a few pages ahead before we... Um, we come together. We come together. So, you know, you can try and understand it on your... Uh, uh, from your point of view and then here you might get another point of view and you put in everything together so you can uh, analyze better and study better um, We have to just shift this. Yeah, so we we'll just move this. to the page where we stopped And then we went here to the one and then we went to the breath of lies nefesh Anna, And then the consciousness Outcome is important and then um, how prana is well endowed. Yes, so okay, this is congestion and depletion. Correct. Yeah. And that's it. All right. So this is where we're going to start. Uh, that is page, um, I presume that's page 11. It says page 10 to 11. Yeah, so which goes... part is it? Okay, it's okay. All right, because I'm, I'm on a ebook, so my numbers are very different. So let's move on. So on the physical plane, prana builds up all mineral, yes, and it also is the controlling agent in the chemical physiological changes in protoplasm, yes. 
which leads to differentiation and the building up of various tissues of the body of plants, animals, and man. And so um, this is the place where I actually remember Master Cho's teaching, where he says that prana or uh, energy is like the catalyst that actually brings about a change in the physical body, helps it heal rapidly and properly, right? And so just for us to remember that when you read this, it sounds so complex, but when Master Cho puts it to us in very, very simple language, we start to understand that, yes? And so um, he's placed this here, Amit has placed it here, so you can have that reference as well. So it becomes easier for you and I <clears throat> to understand what this uh, line means. And so based on that, based on the amount of prana that comes, it can actually accelerate the healing process of our physical bodies. Whether it is a small wound to something that has been serious, something that's even been there around for say 20 odd years, we start to notice amazing changes, amazing response to just this prana entering the physical body and healing it. Yeah. So it says, for those who don't remember, uh, protoplasm is like a jelly-like substance. Uh, which is basically the living part of the cell, all right? And uh, so it says here the controlling agent is prana. So for um, so what they're saying is, you see, differentiation, if you want, um, uh, you know, will lead to differentiation. Differentiation requires energy. If you want to diversify, even for a company, you need money. So you need energy. Building of tissues, of plants, of animals, of men also requires energy. And prana is required for it. So Master Cho is using this concept as the principle of um, life force, where he says, when it's provided to you, uh, it's just like any company, when the, when the money is provided, they have enough funds to uh, differentiate and grow or survive. Right, and I think also this is also very important for the sustaining of our existing life, even if we don't have any kind of sickness or disease. And at the same time, I think this is the same prana that's also used uh, when a woman is pregnant to help build the, the baby within her. So when you do regeneration of an organ, you use more of this. So just to remember that this is the process that actually helps to build, to change and make life healthier and better. I think chapter one, they said for life to exist, there was prana, right? We put that. Yeah. All right. So the next one is the blending of. All right. Um, that's what I'm trying to Yes, so now we go to the next part, uh, the next paragraph that actually tells us that the blending of both astral and physical prana creates what you actually ultimately call a cell, right? So a cell has not only matter from the physical plane, but also from the astral plane. And you've got to understand that this uh, particular cell that is created, if it does not have astral matter, it cannot actually feel pain or any sensation that you and I have. Because they say that the physical cell does not have that program in it. It's only in the astral prana that this exists. And so we're gonna go more into depth uh, a little later, but just to make you understand. So the prana from astral and physical together create the cell, and it gives the power for the cell to then feel whatever it feels. It says here, pleasure or pain. So both positive responses and not so positive responses. Now, when the cell develops these fibers, that is basically when there's a thought created. And so with that comes not only astral matter, not only physical matter, but there's also um, what you call manas matter or uh, thought matter, right? So all these prana, so that is uh, thought or mental prana, astral prana, and physical prana is there in a cell, in every cell of our being, yes? And the amount is also important to see to it that it's healthy. Um, if you remember this from chapter one, we put up a quote from the Psychic self Defense book. It's called, uh, you know, what type of thought form it's called. It's got all three energies, Master Joe's already spoken about, and we, we discussed it in chapter one as well. Um, now, it says the blending of astral with physical prana creates nerve matter, which is fundamentally a cell. Okay. So um, what they're saying, like, like we have been mentioning earlier to develop a physical cell or in other words, to develop uh, another word for develop is to materialize. You require two energies. All right. So if you want materialization, you need two energies. You require prana and you require emotion or emotional energy. Remember we were talking about manifestation and if uh, you know, desire is the 
you know, basis of manifestation. You want to grow, you manifest yourself. So desire is karma. That's where karma came in. So to develop or to materialize, you require two energies, emotional energy and pranic energy. Astral emotion is very important for um, materialization, astral emotion or astral energies, right? Um, the emotional body, all right, is very important. That's why for those of you who've... Um, uh, done Kriya Shakti, it's a course offered by Grandmaster Chok Oksui. Uh, we learned that purification not only of the physical body is required, but also of the emotional energy and mental body is also required. All right. So, um, so the cell develop into fibers as the result of thought. So the cells develop in the fiber due to the thought. All right, the prana pulsating along those fibers being composed of physical, astral, and mental. So in other words, um, pranic energy and emotional energy together give it form, all right? And we discussed this earlier, how one is interchangeable from another. If you, if you think of something, you usually feel something. You, usually the karma or the emotional energy here is um, like a bridge between the thought and the pranic energy. It's like it binds everything together. You can think of it as if you're making bread or chapati or whatever you want to make. It's like the water to bind the flour together, all right, to make the product. So in this case, the pranic energy and emotional energy give it form. Uh, sorry, the, the, the pranic energy and emotional energy give it form and, um, or existence. And the thought or mental energy give it shape, all right? So based on what you think of, uh, it'll have that shape. All right. Um, and like we mentioned earlier, uh, when you think of something almost all the time, you feel something, right? So the emotional energy is involved in both thinking process and manifesting process in both the processes. All right. Now in Kriya Shakti, what we were talking about, instead of manifesting the cell, in this case, you're, he's talking about manifesting a cell. What we learn to do is we learn to create, just to give you a contrast, to make this easier to understand, since many of you have, might have done Kriya Shakti. Um, what we learn to do is to create a clear thought of what we want. All right. Um, and then to give it existence, all right, or to bring it down with emotional energy, and then we materialize it using pranic energy, all right? So we have the thought, then we have intense emotion to bring it down, all right, combined with pranic energy, okay? And we use one of the lowest frequencies of pranic energy from an energy center connected to the physical kingdom to manifest, okay? I cannot reveal the technique, <laughs> But I didn't reveal the technique. <laughs> so this is one level of truth. All right. Anyways, it's not part of the topic of the book, but just to understand, uh, to help you understand how master could have used this knowledge, uh, but made the technology so simple. When I think? Yes, I think uh, when, I, when I was trying to prepare for this, and I think Amit was also saying the same thing, we realized that we were just reading maybe three, four pages, and these three, four pages seem so complex and uh, there's nobody here for us to go and verify and find out whether, you know, what Amit and I are saying is actually accurate. However, we realize at the same time, when we look at Master Cho's book, even though he's not around, there's so much more clarity in what he's written and so much more simple that it makes it easy for us to comprehend and understand these very basic concepts. Whereas here, it, it is so much more complex. And so hours of studying this and then giving it to you Hopefully, we're giving you the right things. <laughs> you have to practice discernment because yeah. some of this stuff is very philosophical and it's... Uh, Correct. Uh, yeah, it requires sometimes uh, faculty that's, which we do not have at the moment. Yeah, so uh, you have to remember that what we've said is, is probably just the perspective of just Sumi or Amit. It's not necessarily the whole truth and you might have a different perspective. And maybe all the three perspectives are right and maybe all the three perspectives could also be equally wrong. So uh, to use enough of discernment, even as we proceed into um, the explanation and the study here, yeah? And that's why we mentioned, this is not just us helping you, but you are also helping us. Because we're gonna go into spirale now. So we're going to spiral down the rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's gonna be interesting now, all right? So okay. the next- Sorry, j just sure, to recap, um, what I said was in, so basically, the hints are already there for what you want to talk about in Kriya Shakti because before you ask any questions, don't ask me any questions on this because it's not a topic for the book. I just gave it as an example to, um, for you to understand how a cell is manifested. Because those of you who don't Kriya Shakti, uh, to materialize something, you, real, you know how important your emotional state is. So you just think about that. 
all right? So if you want to bring in something into form and into existence, you need karma or you need emotional matter. Okay, okay. so uh, let's move on to the next part. So here we're talking about an atom, yes, uh, which is in those days, one of the smallest, um, smallest of discoveries within uh, the entire universe, it was the tiniest and the smallest particle that they could find. And so the atom. And so when you look at it from the physical plane, they say uh, within the physical plane, when you look at the atom itself, uh, there is a, a course of prana that comes through it. And so we're going to look at these with reference to the different rounds. All right. Now, when we talk about the different rounds, which we have done in, in other sessions, including the textbook of Theosophy, let's just understand we are at the fourth round. Yeah, so there's the first round, the second round, the third round, the fourth round. We're at the fourth round. And so with those, uh, with those rounds, the reference to the atom. And so they say, uh, within the physical plane, atoms themselves, the prana courses along the spirale. In our chain, yes, the first round. In the first round, the monadic life. Remember, the life exists in each of those globes. So the monadic life that flows down, when it comes down, then remember it has three more levels under it. And so they call it the spiritual, the, the spiritual triad. So it's the atmic level, the buddhic level, and the manas level. So this is basically the higher soul level, the causal body level. This is what you and I call the intuitional level and the spiritual level. So these three come through that, it comes down and vivifies the first set of spirale. And these are then used by the prana currents that run and affect the physical dense body. So in that atom, right, through this, this uh, prana, these currents of prana, the energy from the first round comes in to help the physical form. And then remember, everything has the other energies around it as well. So you have the atom, and so you have this dense energy that has come to help it. Now, beyond this, from the second round, Yes, comes the second spirale, which then helps with the prana that surrounds the energy or the etheric double, right? And so it says here, the second round, the monad vivifies the second set of spirale and through them run the prana connected to the etheric double. Yes, and so the energy body is then there. And then from the third round, the third spirale, which through them cause the karma, yes, or the desire, um, the emotional aspect is that is the sensation of pain and pleasure that we talk about, which is also within it. And lastly, from the fourth round, that's where we are at. Yes, from the monad, from the monadic life, awakens the fourth set of spirale, which comes, uh, which becomes a vehicle of the karma, manasik, uh, prana. And then once this atom has all of it, the physical, the etheric, the emotional and the mental, then this atom is ready to then be to then be built as a brain uh, into the brain as a cell um, uh, or as it says here fit to be built into a brain for thought right and so only when it comes to this level where all four spirales are there is in, within that atom is that atom then ready to be used by our brain yes to create thought yeah that's it that's it done? No, I just spoke about that part. I won't go to the next now. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Uh, Another perspective. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, what does it say? The prana uses an energy channel called the spirale to move in the physical plane. I think it says, I think I made a mistake. It says, uh, within the physical uh, plane, atoms themselves, the prana courses along the spirale. So basically, so um, you have to say, you know, I used to always think before, there is air prana, there's ground prana, etc., all over. Just like in our bodies, it requires meridians, right? It requires meridians or nadis to move around. I used to always wonder, the prana in the physical plane, when we look, you know, all the prana moving around, um, you know, I, I, are they really moving in a haphazard motion? Or is it really not random? Uh, um, and they're actually moving through a meridian, which is interpenetrating. On a high level, my belief uh, is just like, you see there's a concept of as, a high, as above, so below. Uh, and um, 
my idea is if we have meridians and nadis and everything through which prana circulates through us, uh, the earth also has meridians and nadis, which we're going to talk about. All right. And basically, the spirale, you can look at them as just energy highways. All right. It requires, just like our bodies require meridians or nadis to move around, the prana uh, in a particular plane requires a channel or energy highways. All right. Uh, so when you see them in the air moving in a haphazard motion, it doesn't make sense because there might be a lot of loss uh, of prana if you just allow it to just go wherever, <laughs> you know. I don't know how it moves. So I was always thinking there must be some sort of network here that would uh, allow the prana to flow in a refined manner. So it's ensured that it's then every particle of every part of earth, you know. Not like, oh my God, the prana did not go to, uh, you know, this corner of the room today. <laughs> it never happens like that. I, I don't think so. Um, so, uh, so how come it just ensures everything? So to make sure you ensure that it goes everywhere requires a highway or a, a channel, all right? And before we go further, you have to understand the concept of as above, so below. Your physical body, all right, has an etheric body, all right? I hope you know that because this book is called The Etheric Double. Um, all right, you have an emotional body as well, uh, etc. etc. It has energy centers, which we will learn about in the book. It has meridians to which um, prana circulates, right? But we are on the earth, all right? We are on the earth, and the earth is the planetary parabrahman or the planetary god, all right? The physical body is the earth, and the earth, all right, um, has an etheric body, right? This etheric body also has energy centers. I'm sure you know that earth has an etheric body. For those who are pranic healers, we use that etheric body to heal, right? And the earth has energy centers as well, right? I heard Brazil is supposed to be from a, from a you know, from not even a colleague, me or a mentor, that Brazil is supposed to be the sex chakra. India is supposed to be the heart chakra. Uh, no, actually India is mental. Anyway, so it has basically energy centers, all right? Obviously, if it has energy centers, my thinking is, if you have energy centers, you have to have energy channels through which prana can flow through and from these energy centers, right? You can't just have energy centers and no, no, no energy channels, right? So uh, whose energy body would you think would be most subtle? The planetary parabrahman or yours? Obviously, the planetary parabrahman. So this etheric body interpenetrates every single cell of our subtle bodies, all right? And every single being, in this earth subtle bodies. So this is the principle behind distant healing in pranic healing, all right? So that is why in the great invocation, it's very, very important, all right? When we do the great invocation, being inside, interpenetrating the energy body of the earth, when Master Choi used to teach us before, he used to tell us to form triangles. You remember that? He used to tell us to have form a triangle and do it. And what he said was, um, you remember we spoke about the triangle, your energy. So he says, when you form triangle, um, he says, you are the cell in the body. All right, you are the cell in the body of the planetary parabrahman. All right, um, so the when the Earth's energy body is being transformed, all right, okay. So, so what what did he say? Um, yeah, he said that it develops when you do the gamification in triangles. It starts to develop the triangular body of the Earth, not just for us, but for the Earth. All right, so he says you are the cell in the body of the parabrahman. So when you um, so when the Earth's energy body is being transformed, then the Earth has the power to absorb tremendous energy and cause changes, all right? So now the Earth is part of the solar system, all right, where there is a solar power Brahman. Does the solar power Parabrahman have an etheric body? Yes. Does it have energy centers, meridians? Do they all interpenetrate the Earth and us? Of course. That's why, see, if you have a cell here, this cell, all right, would tell you it is in me it is in you i move and have my being so that we're going to look at later on when madame blavatsky talk about the inner sun so that's why this saint paul's quote all right so so of course it interpenetrates all of us you have to understand this is a very complicated discussion because there are different aspects when you talk about spirales what i'm trying to tell you within each one there are other ones all right, so there are highways within highways and spirales within spirales. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at um, only the practical aspects and we're going to look at our own uh, energetic system, which is also known as the tree of life in the Kabbalistic tradition. All right, we look at our own energy system because this 
uh, part of the book talks about only us, right? Our own, our own bodies. But for you to understand, this is happening on high level. So you have to think about what does it mean when you say, okay, from the point of light within the mind of God, right? And we'll explain what the mind is. Uh, let light stream forth into the minds of every person. Now from the mind of God to every person, there has to be a distribution network. There has to be an energy highway, right? Something to think about, right? That's why Master Cho in his book, um, The um, Spiritual Essence of Man, it's a lot, I'm not going to read it out, but he says the tree of life is very complex and it can be studied from many levels and many aspects. It can be studied from the human level, the planetary level, the solar level, the galactic level. The tree of life is basically your chakras. So he's talking about, can you imagine, galactic level and higher, which we're not going to do because we don't have the faculties to even validate and it'll be a useless philosophical conversation. Not that philosophical conversations are useless. Uh, by studying and knowing oneself, it is possible to have a glimpse of the macrocosm. So according to ancient teaching and principle, as above, so below, man is the macrocosm, uh, microcosm and a reflection of the my macrocosm. Right. Interesting, right? Yeah, you should read the book. Anyway, so this is what I think Sumi's talked about, right? The first set of spirale comes into the physical body, the second set spirale, etheric body, third set astral body, fourth set mental body, mind, which is the um, astral and mental, and I'll talk about that. So basically what it's saying is in the first round, okay, in the first round, I'm going to make it easy because it's complicated. It says modernic life flowing through. I just, oh, internet. All right. So within the first round, our divine spark or the energy of the divine spark passes through triple energies of the divine soul. Okay. You have to understand just like we have triple energies here, the higher soul also has triple energies. I think Atmik is will, Buddhic is love and Manas is intelligence. So I think it's talking about those uh, thing, right? It's talking about Atma, Buddhic. Yeah. So it's talking about these three aspects of the, divine spark. Um, so it passes through the triple energies of the divine soul and livening or giving life to the first set of spirale, which is used as a distribution network for prana to influence the physical body. All right. So before you create anything, you need to create a, a network. The spirale is basically like roads or pathways. All right. So my understanding of this is before you want to inhabit a place, you want to go and you want to open an office somewhere or for example, the government, um, you know, wants to open a new special economic zone or special office area for people or new downtown area. It usually has to ensure that proper infrastructures are such as roads, streetlights, etc., are built towards that place so that people who would be working there and sustaining those businesses will be able to travel to and from that place. Right. So that's why what it says, it vivifies or it animates or it enlivens the first set of spirale, which is used by pranic energies that deal with servicing the physical body. All right. That means your physical body, the physical matter is probably made and sustained through the first set of spirale. All right. The spirale, like I mentioned before, are basically energy highways or pathways. Don't don't get confused with them. OK, uh, for that specific form of energy that it hosts. That's why it says um are used by the okay just remember what i said okay um so it's basically uh, energy highways or pathways for that specific form of energy it holds in the second round the divine spark animates the divine spark or the energy of the divine spark animates or gives life to the second spiraling highway which will be used as a transportation or nadis for etheric matter to service the etheric body all right. In the third round, the, the third spiral highway is created by the divine spark, which will be used by astral matter to service the astral body. All right. In the fourth round, the divine spark enlivens the fourth uh, sp spiral energy highway, which will be used to service the mental emotional matter, which enables the brain to think. All right. This is very, very interesting because he said mental emotional matter matter. Because one time Master Cho was asking, do you know what the mind was? I remember this. Um, you say, you, I'm, I'm the I am affirmation. For those of you who have done the Achieving Oneness class, uh, I am affirmation. We say, I'm not the body. The I am is not the emotion. The I am is not the thought. The fourth one, the fourth one is I am not even the mind. All right. <laughs> so you have four sets of spirales. I am not the body, I'm not the uh, um, Emotion. emotions, I'm not the thought, I'm not even the mind. All right. Now, what is the mind? 
what you call the mind is actually made of two components. For those of you who don't understand the astral body yet, there, there's a body of lights. If you've heard of ghosts, what you call ghosts is nothing more than an incarnated soul that has left the physical body and is living in a subtle body. Now that subtle body is what we call the astral body or emotional body. All right. Why is it called emotional body? Uh, because it's in the subtle body. You can experience intense joy, uh, intense pain, intense emotion. All right. Uh, although it's used mainly for feeling, it's also capable of generating thoughts. So, so this subtle body, this is what Sumi was talking about, right? About the intense feeling. It specializes in feeling. So this subtle body is called the astral body. It's part of the mind. It's not the whole mind. Now, when this astral body dies, the soul transfers to what we call the mental body. And this mental body is what is used by the soul for thinking. Now, these two bodies, all right, what the way Master Chua come, uh, explained to us, the emotional body, these two and the mental body combined is what you call the mind. All right. They are nothing more than instruments used by the soul. All right. And I was thinking, have you ever wondered how the soul uses the mind to create thoughts and emotions in the first place? Right. How does it use that? I'm going to connect to the spirale. How does it use, use it to connect it? Uh, how does it use the, the subtle bodies as equipment? From the pranic healing point of view, it's very easy to explain. The soul interpenetrates all the soul is the higher principle encompassing all the three low, lower principles, including the physical body. So it interpenetrates um, every set, single cell of the body, right? But the question is, how does it interpenetrate? All right. Based on my understanding of what we've been reading about this spirale, uh, the interpenetration is spiral. Now, I always thought the interpenetration was like this, but the interpenetration seems to be spiral. Okay, in fact, most of the flow of energy from higher planes to lower planes is spiral. Everything is moving in a spiral form. All right, and this is very, very important. You have three permanent seeds. All right, the per physical permanent seed, the emotional permanent seed, the mental permanent seed. Right, these three seeds, okay, although in the book it looks solid, all right, is actually composed of spiraling energy, just like how. Master said, when, uh, if some of you have been to retreats or uh, seen some of the videos, he says, something that looks physical is not really a solid, is not really solid, it still has gaps, right? Remember, we study in science. The only difference between solid, liquid, is solid has less space between the molecules, but it still has gaps. So it's not really solid in, in, in essence, like completely compact. So what you saw in the book, Achieving Oneness with uh, the Higher Soul, or Achieving, Achieving Oneness, sorry. Yes. Still, I'm thinking of the blue book. Um, what you saw um, in that picture is looking solid, but it's not solid. First of all, it's made of energy. Number two, if you really zoom in, like, you know, you have a special iPhone and you can zoom in, pinch and zoom in, you'll see it, it's all composed of spirales. It's all spiraling energies compacted together. All right. Now, so what we see, um, so as of now, all right, our seeds have four spirale in them. All right. So there is interaction between etheric, emotional, mental, and higher mental matter. I wouldn't say causal. It's not really fully developed yet. That's buddhic. Right. So um, this is because we are in the fourth round. So just like Sumi was talking about, the first round, the way your seed was created, when you're talking about the atom, the way the seed is created is you have the first set of spirale, which will enable you to create physical atoms, physical molecules your skin, your bones, your tissue, your cells, it'll enable you to do it. The dense body. The dense body. Then you have the second spirale. So this is the construction of the physical permanent seed. And it's made of spirale. And right now, if you look at a, most people's uh, permanent seed, it's composed of four set of spirale. And each spirale leads to a certain place for that type of energy to come down. All right? All right? So that is uh, what our seeds are made of, right? Um, and the reason it has four uh, spirales is because we are in the fourth round, right? That's why when the physical seed is withdrawn, although it's physical or etheric, it can exist in the causal plane. When the emotional seed is withdrawn, although it can exist in the causal plane, even though um, it's astral, because each seed contains all four spirale, all right? Each seed, and that's how the interpenetration happened. And if the seed is like that, all right, if the seed is like that, every single particle that comes out of the seed that design everything will all be spirales so all your atoms everything is made of spirales everything is spiraling 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 from your auras from your um from your atoms from your physical body everything is spiraling in nature all right this gets very complicated so we'll stop with that <laughs> <laughs> all 
All right. But this is very important to remember that as, as far as I know, I might be wrong. Uh, you have only four sets of spirali for now in your, um, in your permanent seeds. All right. And that's what they're talking about because if you did not have it, so each seed will have that. Now, how do I know it? If you look at certain uh, books, uh, it says the number of spirale at work in the permanent atoms in this round is four. As in the ordinary unattached atoms of matter in general at the stage of evolution. So that's study of consciousness by Annie Besson. And then it says, by the time we reach the fourth round, we have four distinct streams of life from the monad circulating through four sets of spirales in his own permanent atoms. Wow. <laughs> Each of these rays have a connection with one or other of the permanent atoms in the lower threefold man and has a direct action upon the spirale found within that atom. That is Treatise on Cosmic Fire. Please don't try and read that book yet. Unless you <laughs> for fine, okay? Now, since these three seeds are spiralic in nature, let's just say they have spirales, the, you know, highways, all the atoms in your body are built in a spiralic form. Almost everything is spiral. Every molecule and, and they are controlled through a network of spirale. Can you imagine that? Atoms exist, your physical atoms exist. And this, remember, as above, so below. So this network goes to the divine spark. From that, the network extends to the planetary program. From that, it extends almost to the solar program, then over and over and over again. So that's why in theosophy, they say the atoms exist due to the energy, which is the word, right? All right, consisting of several energies being sent by the solar logos, right? And the existence of matter, basically, um, therefore, the absolutely, the continuance uh, of matter is by the use of the sound, right? Now, if the Supreme God chose to withdraw this force, the spiral is just a highway, if, and he's using these highways to manifest. If he decides to just withdraw it or just to stop, uh, according to theosophy, every single atom would instantly disintegrate. The whole physical plane would disappear almost instantly. They would describe it like a candle being blown out. <laughs> All right. So if you look at pranic healing, if you look at pranic healing for those of you who are pranic healers, what is the advanced method of removing diseased energy? Do you move your hand in a certain motion? All right. What is the advanced way of increasing the flow of energy into the body or energizing? Do you move your hands in a certain motion? All right. How do the chakras move? Are they moving in a certain motion? Aha. So now you're thinking about this. All right. All right. Now, the question is, so what? <laughs> All right. The question is, so what? What are we going to do with this information? That's so great. I have to spread this. Uh, <laughs> so what are we going to, why are we going into this? Number one, it brings a feeling of humility because you feel that you're being sustained, even right now, your physical body is being sustained by the words. So you don't pay proper humility. You don't say thank you. The energy is reduced or you're not so receptive. And then if it's withdrawn completely, you're finished. All right. Number two, by this knowledge, by this knowledge, we know that if we want to progress faster, we can practice certain meditations or yogic techniques to develop the fifth spirale or higher. Because right now, our physical atoms have only four. So we can manifest physically. We can feel emotions. We can sort of, uh, our mind is pretty much effective, but even the third and fourth spirale, uh, the third is quite active. Emotions are pretty developed. Uh, but the fourth one, uh, <laughs> you know, the mental, the mind is still developing. And then the fifth one and the sixth one and the seventh one, we have to develop. Then I'll give it to Sonia. Yes. So what I found interesting also with reference to the atom that I spoke about and then when Amit spoke about all the different seeds, it's interesting because remember when I mentioned, I said, until all these spirales are there, the atom cannot even be used by the brain to, to um, create a thought. And it's interesting that it's, it takes about nine weeks uh, for them to actually see the physical brain in a fetus. So it's, it's already been created through that time. And remember, we say that in the one and a half months uh, after the period of uh, gestation, the, the baby that's being created, the fetus that's being created, has all the three seeds in it. So when all the three seeds come, my understanding is all the four spirales are already in that uh, fetus that's being created. And so uh, the atoms are now have all, all the four uh, pranas in it to then continue to grow and including the brain. And now the other thing that they also mentioned here with reference to the brain again, now in us adults, 
when we have the brain, we have only these four spirales that work through us. However, when we start to do yogic practices, meditations, they say that we are able to then tap into the, what Amit was mentioning here, the fifth and maybe even the sixth spirale. And so when you bring that into the energy, uh, into, the, into the body, we have to be aware whether the, the brain can actually hold that new prana that's coming in. And so I noticed with Master Chua, at least, his teachings, uh, starting with, I think, what Master Danny used to share, when uh, people were doing something called Arhatic Yoga, they were given Arhatic Yoga till, say, level three, at one go. And he realized they were not able to handle it. And from what Master Danny says, maybe there's just one other person from his whole batch that is still around. And so also in all the earlier batches. And so he realized he needed to stagger, yes, even the practice of the so-called high levels. So that our body gets used to one level of energy or one level of prana probably coming from the fifth and sixth spirale into us. And as the body gets accustomed to it, the brain is not uh, fused with it. It's not too much and doesn't burn off. The body then adjusts to higher and higher levels of consciousness. So the spirale is not just prana that we're talking about, but this prana has consciousness. And so the ability of the brain to go into higher and higher and higher levels of prana will start to happen with certain practices. It, it can't happen just to just touch up on Sushan sure. before I forget. Because she said the, to, to, to tap into, but you can't tap into it because there's no fifth spirali, there's no road. You see, you want to go somewhere, the, the permanency doesn't have the fifth one yet. So the, the idea is not only to, um, to develop, like what do you say, what do you say to access the fifth? And sixth, or I don't know what it is. Anyway, <laughs> the spiral is basically also you need to create the network. What, what the divine spark will do, and taking the energy from above would to vivify it or animate it. But first, the road has to be created. Your, your seed doesn't have that yet, I mean, as of now. So that has to be done first. You have to create the spiral, the spiral network within your three permanent atoms first. Correct. And so I think in due course, as the round, this is only the fourth, four and a half that we are, slightly beyond four and a half round. Uh, as we go into the fifth round, automatically this will start coming into um, the beings that are created then. And so there will be the fifth and the sixth. And then, of course, they also mention here the seventh uh, spirale. Yeah. So let's just talk about that and then let's see where we can end. And so it says, uh, this is as far as normal a humanity has progressed, that is with reference to the uh, four rounds and therefore the four spirale. Certain yogic practices, it says, of course, caution to the brain, brings about the development, yes, of the fifth and the sixth set of spirale. These which serve as channels for higher forms of consciousness. Yeah. Yes. So we are then, because when we do yogic practices, we are trying to build a bridge like he's saying, we're trying to build a highway across there. So maybe as we reach higher and higher, if it's, if it's um, the will of God, then maybe these energies and hopefully by the blessings of the teacher as well, these energies can then bring down the spirale and, and that level of consciousness down to us. However, it says the seven spirale in the atom must not be confused. They're talking about worlds here. They're talking about uh, three coarse ones and seven fine ones. So we won't go into that because it will come into your course. However, I'd like to go uh, to the next part and then end with this for today. Where it says... Mm, oh, sorry. You want to add? Okay, sure. Go ahead. About the spirale. Okay, so there's lots more about the spirale. So in Let's case we cannot finish that, we will end with this today. We'll take your questions. We have finished one page. Yeah. <laughs> so we're hoping to finish three today. Okay. But anyway... Anyway. And then we'll move into the secret doctrine talks about prana in the next so, class. So just to um, bring about the whole concept of the practicing. So we can, so look, so we can actually do certain yogic practices to build this fifth set of spirale and uh, higher. All right. So question is, how do we do it? Right. It's easier said than done. How are we going to create these new spirale? <laughs> Right. Imagine if you are on your own, you read this, you're like, ah, I'd like to create some more spirale. Uh, and also, we need to uh, perfect the third and fourth one. So this is where it says uh, in occult chemistry. Um, so, so you see, right now, we have to also perfect the, the third and fourth ones. The fourth one, more likely. You see, right now, our mental bodies are developed, right? But the pathway, all right, but the, but the pathway can be developed much more. 
all right? The buddhic consciousness or faculty, which is what we call direct inner perception, all right? Direct perception is barely developed, all right, in most people. So this buddhic intelligence, first of all, has to be developed, all right? That's probably the next spirali. That's what we're doing, right? So that's the next spirali that needs to be vivified into every cell of our body and into our seeds. Then beyond the buddhic intelligence, there's atmic intelligence, which is honestly, according to when we asked Master Cho, at least when I heard him, he said it's incomprehensible for anyone at the moment to understand. Uh, you see, buddhic intelligence is still in, uh, comprehensible to the human mind because people get flashes uh, or what they call intuition, right? Um, Religious people call it inspiration, but also that also happens only once in a while to the brightest human minds, not to everyone. All right. So the spirali needs to be completely and continuously vivified and part of our permanent seats. All right. And once that happens, according to Master Cho, in people whose fifth and sixth spirali are well developed, they have buddhic and atmic and higher. I was told that just like we need to still our emotions and thoughts, they need to actually still their buddhic faculty to go higher. <laughs> Right. So the first four spirale mostly deal with the higher soul through the incarnated soul's energy. All right. So what I understand is this is usually the spirale or pathways from the 12th chakra to the seeds um, that are more activated than, the, you know, from the 12th chakra to the seeds, which is more active, more vivified compared to the 12th chakra to the higher world. All right. This is why we have the concept of inner noises. This is why the incarnated soul gets contaminated. This is the why the incarnate soul forgets who they are. All right. So how do we, so the incarnate soul is vivified. Okay. The mental, the mind, the emotion, but it's not connected higher. So how do you vivify the whole thing? How do we access pathways to the high soul directly? How do we create a bridge to the higher world? That's what he was talking about. Okay. So one of the things um, I'd oh, like sorry, to, sorry. so, so sorry, the personality sorry. Ray, um, According to Treatise on Cosmic Fire by Alice Bailey, it says the personality ray deals with the first four spirale and is the source of their stimulation. All right. Yes, and so one of the things that we do when we do, for example, the Twin Hearts meditation on a regular basis, I think this is something um, Acharya Hector had mentioned as well. So when we talk about the crown chakra, this is the center of higher intuition. The, the uh, forehead is the lower uh, intuitional center, right? So this crown center is actually connected to the level that we call the intuitional plane or the intuitional world, which is one level higher than the causal body. So, or the causal world. Okay. And so, uh, yeah, so, and, and so when you do your meditation on certain days, and that's what uh, Amit was referring to, you might have some vision, you might have an explosion of light because suddenly there is this connect between your crown chakra to that level. Right. And so through that level, maybe you bring down the energy. And so that is not uh, that is beyond the fourth uh, spirale. Right. That's already moving into the fifth spirale. So that can happen. And 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 I think in Master Choi's um, teachings, we don't realize the significance of some of the uh, simple meditations we think he's taught us. There's a lot more to it. And uh, the higher levels, though, it seems like you just take 20 minutes, half an hour. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, so if you look at the, at the higher levels, we may not realize how significant they are with reference to some of the teachings that we are beginning to understand today. So I'll hand it over to Amit. Go okay. ahead. So the question was, how do we access these parts of the high soul directly? And Sumi gave the answer already. Uh, so sorry, we, I wanted to give my Sorry, we don't first. usually discuss before we I discussed this with you yeah, already. That one part was there. So I haven't really told him what I'm thinking. Sometimes things are coming to me as I'm talking to you. So uh, apologize okay. for so that. So according to Master Choa, he talks about um, the Da'at. Uh, and he talks about um, the abyss, all right? Because anything below the Ajna Chakra, all right? According to the teacher, um, is connected with the incarnated soul. All right. Now, um, but what he said was in most people, this is what I was, that's why I have this idea that the, that the incarnate soul is mostly the vivify network is here, but it's not bridged upwards. Right. So if you want to, you can convert the dot instead of the bridge going down, you can use it as a bridge to the higher worlds. All right. I cannot explain more because this is an open uh, uh, study Second. group and there are non arhatic and other people here as well, maybe not in particulars, you're welcome to be here, but there is a limit. So you have to read this and figure out for yourself what is happening. Um, this is where Arhatic Yoga comes in. In Arhatic Yoga, we are 
continuously enlivening the spirale as well as creating new spirale in the higher levels, all right? Especially level four and higher, okay? So, um, Arhatic Yoga level four. Arhatic Yoga level four. So, you know, here it talks about um, in the study of consciousness, how um, the connection with permanent a task is exceedingly difficult, right? Because he must vivify a more sets of spirale than vivified at humanity in this town. In this time, four sets of spirale are already at his service as a fourth round man. He begins to vivify a fifth and thus to bring about, bring into manifestation the fifth round atom while still working in a fourth round body. So this is what Sumi was talking about when Master gave the initial levels, he gave it together, first three. So you have to understand also the body we have is made of permanent seeds with four spirale, all right? If we do yogic practices mm -hmm. to animate the fifth one, we need to upgrade the body and allow time for the body to adjust to the energies and make it changes without overwhelming the body. It has to be gradual. That's why the arhatic levels cannot be given all at once. The first level has to just to do with actually activating the chakras, which will manifest, which will cause a psychological change, or in other words, master or improve the uh, third and fourth spirale. Not even, not even the, the, I don't think the fourth one, maybe mostly the third one, Most, mostly due to psychological or emotional. That's level one. Level two has to do with three and four, where you are manifesting virtues. All right. All right. And higher. So that's why we cannot give the levels or the teacher cannot give the levels at all at once. And the first three levels have to do with the modification of the bodies and the higher levels have to do with the other part. And that's why also master said on several occasions in, it took millions of years for your body to evolve to this state. And for higher practices, it's supposed to evolve into a human, superhuman state. Of course, it cannot be done in one year time. It takes time. You know, we can't transcend the laws of nature, right? But instead of taking hundreds of thousands of years, sometimes he said millions of years, it can be done in 10 to 20 years. That is super fast evolution. And just like Sumi was saying, when you do the Metsuya and Twin Hearts, when we, my understanding is more divine energy comes spiraling down through the emotional cord. According to Master Cho, it comes down the emotional cord directly into the heart and uh, uh, sorry, into the solar plexus. And so as more energy passes through the silver cord of emotion, you experience the greater peace, love and calmness. That's why in just 15 minutes, you feel so much peace compared to much longer before when you practice other techniques like breathing or anything like that. All right. The third and fourth spirale are vivified in this case, right? As you meditate and practice different meditations, the Holy Spirit or the divine energy descends through different silver cords. All right. By the way, for those of you who practice 6363, the balancing breathing exercise regularity, the practice of 6363 alone, all right, uh, and also, by the way, in Alice Berry's book I wrote here, the spirale has also a connection with the chakra, all right? And if the chakra is a wind influence, has an impact on the spirale. So you can have it directly, or you can manipulate the energies of the chakras, which will add and create the, or vivify the spirale more. All right. So that's how the meditation helps. For those of you who do 6360 regularly, the practice of 6360, according to Master Chua, if it's done for many, many years, will develop your intuitive intelligence. That is the fifth spirale, I think, right? So if, if, if it will develop your buddhic faculty. Now think about 6360. How does the Ida and Pingala move within your body when you do the 6360 exercise? The DNA as well. The DNA as well. You think it's a coincidence? <laughs> <laughs> it all when, and where does it in, intersect? At the bottom and at the crown. The crown controls the brain, the center of buddhic consciousness, so it will awaken. But slowly, you have to be very patient. Uh, and that's the problem with, they say, with the West, because they want things quickly. Instant coffee, instant email, instant everything. But this is relatively instant. According to Master Choa, this is what I heard him say, uh, the development of a certain faculty normally takes maybe hundreds of thousands of years, my God. Millions of years, he said, for ordinary people. I said, oh my God, that's a long time. Uh, I was thinking dinosaurs and all that, but that's like a lot of millions of years. So if you spend... 10 to uh, 20 to 30 years developing your buddhic faculty. It's nothing. All right. For example, many people, he said, uh, uh, Master has incarnated for maybe millions of years to develop their mental faculty. All right. So if you can do it in 10, 20, 30, 40 years also, it's really fantastic.
All right, so you have physical exercises to uh, develop your uh, spirale, uh, your breathing exercise to develop your spirale. You have meditation to develop your spirale. In Arhatic or in higher, higher teachings, you have several things happening simultaneously. So that's why it's happening at a very fast rate, not just one, one level. And this is what it's given uh, in the uh, study of consciousness. It says, um, this way has been found in the East in the practice of Raja Yoga, whereby the safe exercise of the high consciousness is sought by intense concentration. This is meditation of the blue pearl. However, since it's 100 years ahead now, ours is more potent for now because it's upgraded. We're not only developing intense concentration, as we know, we're developing to actually one of the purposes to balance the concentration and awareness. So the heart and the the crown all right that is one of the most important purposes of the meditation on blue pearl and it says here when you practice this raja yoga this in itself develops the brain as an instrument for the subtler forces working in the brain cells in the manner already described in connection with the thought moreover it slowly opens up the set of spirali of the atom next in order for the, for those now in activity and thus adds a new organ of higher functioning so this shows that Practicing meditation on the blue pearl, practicing meditation on twin hearts, and of course high levels start the set of spirally. So just to summarize, you have our bodies is composed of four distinct pathways or spirales, each with their function. All right. Um, by the way, according to uh, Alice, uh, not Annie Besant, when the soul is not incarnated, the three seeds are in the causal plane. The flow of energy through the spirale is greatly reduced there's hardly any flow of energy there from the monad to the seeds when the soul wants to reincarnate according to the a study in consciousness which is a book by any person the flow of energy through the spiral is increased and then the spiral is reanimated all right so our body is composed of uh, four distinct pathways or spirales, each of which they which have their own function. Number two, the energy passing through these pathways depending on depends on whether the soul is incarnate or not. That's what I spoke about when the soul is uh, incarnated, uh, not incarnated, there's less energy flowing through it. When it's incarnated, there's much more energy flowing through it, according to studying consciousness. Number three, and most important, at least this whole point is just like a scholarly discussion. Uh, we can apply Arhatic yoga techniques or techniques taught by highly developed teachers to increase the number of spirali and also to increase the quantity and quality of energy through existing spirali both all right so we need to vivify the spirale of buddhic intelligence then there's three level of intelligence higher than that <laughs> according to master Chua. but <laughs> one at a time right this is not only applicable for meditation only uh, certain types of hatha yoga like the five tibetan rites for example eight tibetan breathing exercises definitely vivify the energy to the spirale at least for the first and second spirale for sure all right that's why when you do Tibetan exercise and you check the prana flowing through it, it vivifies the spirally more. Um, and these ones will give you the ability, once you start vivifying a spirally, it'll give you the ability to sense and experience much more than just mental and emotional matter. Okay, that's that. I think yeah. we should stop. Yeah. All right. So uh, just one thing when Sriram, uh, sorry, when Amit was talking about this, I suddenly remembered that, uh, you know, the purification that we do, whether you've done the soul class or whether you've done the Arahatic yoga class, uh, is actually working on the chakras, right? Whether it's the chakras, also. yes, etherically, emotionally, mentally. So whether you call it the basic chakra and the navel chakra, the sex chakra, it's all associated with the physical form. You look at the solar plexus and the heart, it works with the emotional. And you look at the throat, the agnya, it's with reference to the mental and the crown is the spiritual. And so I was thinking, you know, when we start working on ourselves, we start to change the quality of energy in the chakra. That quality of energy within the chakra, as we've done more purification and, and working on ourselves, starts to influence the spirale, the permanent seeds within us, and therefore whatever it is that we are trying to do to bring up and bring down as well, right? And uh, so for me, the practice is, is put in such a simple way, again, yeah. coming back, uh, that we don't even realize we're doing all these things. Yes, and this makes it so easy for us to start working on becoming better and better and better. And you will realize this if you have done, say, for example, if you were there with us with the Vaisak, uh, especially your Hatha Yogis, if you were there for the Vaisak, uh, you know, preparation, you realize because we did so much more purification, hopefully intense because also so many of us were connected, uh, the practice on the day of the Vaisak was more intense than before. 
plus the area surrounding us is also more still compared to you know the noise and the other levels of pollution and, and uh, other things it makes a big difference in also experiencing what we did um, today uh, sorry what we do when when we do our meditations regularly so keep yeah. this distribution network in mind as we move forward and also like sumi says again you notice the emotions affect the etheric and they're all hand in hand yeah so we are almost at the end. Uh, I hope this has made more sense to you. Please read up on what we've done. Barely one page, but please read it so you know you can understand what was just said. Uh, we just look at uh, any questions there are right now. Hey, so you did Avengers read. NK. Thank you, Balachandra. You read it, but you couldn't understand. Hopefully, we've put in some light. And that is our own light. <laughs> Hopefully, it's the right light to, to you. And it makes because no then sense. you need a whole set of fantastic clairvoyants who are going to observe uh, the spirale as you meditate, the spirale uh, of a normal person versus a developed person. So we have to just take the. That's why I give quotations from um, uh, more pe people, you know, teachers or authors who have good credibility. Uh, the like Sutra Atma, do we have Sutra for Kama Sutra? Uh, can I have more details? That's the emotional uh, cord. Yeah. I think that's what you're talking about. The other Kama Sutra, you can Google. There are a lot of, uh, <laughs> All right. And then uh, Falguni has mentioned the Himalayas have Earth's heart chakra. Ah, okay. That's what I've heard. So probably close to what we are all mentioning. Okay. Yeah. The TNA sound is cracking. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Our, our uh, internet became unstable for a few seconds in between. I hope you guys are like okay Evan, <laughs> after Avenge, this discussion. The, the Avengers uh, okay. end game. <laughs> we have yeah. a few raised hands. Actually. Okay, here we go. Uh, let's look at... Okay, that's first. Let me look at it a little bit. Uh, Luxury yeah. wants the link uh, for last week's session. All right. Um, that is 7.31. If Aditya, if you're there or someone else can just give it to her. Uh, emotional mental bodies are definitely outside the outer aura. Outer aura is just part of your etheric. Correct. It's just a container for energies. Correct. It's, it's, it's smaller, it's a little bigger than the physical body, the energy body or the etheric double, whereas the astral is much more bigger than both these two bodies. Yes. And interpenetrates the energy body and the physical body. Always remember the higher principle encompasses the lower principle. All right. Maybe if we have time, we'll discuss something. Okay. Okay. Tibetan exercises, Paul. Uh, there are books on the Tibetan exercise. Very simple uh, exercises. If you can get a book. Um, next week, maybe I'll show you that book. Five so, Tibetan rites. Yeah, but the they five don't have Tibetan rites. No. The breathing is what pulls down and vivifies the channels. But at least you still have the rotation in that. Mm -hmm. so you can still bring the energy down. Okay, uh, Manish says that he read the book twice, but now I'm able to understand. <laughs> I read it six times. I'm joking. Yes. <laughs> okay, thank you, people. All right. Um, all right, so that's done. Okay, all right, that's that, I think. The vortices are different. Uh, I don't know what vortices are. Are you talking about the chakras? We go into that, but spiral is just distribution networks. Yeah. The uh, chakras are also called vertices, so I'm not too sure what you're referring to. Swami Gita Sputti. Connecting um, it to where it's Yes, um, that's what we were trying to do, Amita. Um, we're trying to, yes, refer to this book to try and help you understand it as much as we can. Uh, at the same time, also to try and add uh, GMCK's teachings into it so it becomes more simple and easier. And that's why both of us decided to do this. He has a different perspective. I have a different perspective. And to give you both of those together. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you so much, everybody. So music and sound frequencies. Yeah, probably. Definitely. Yes. The sound, the, the logos, the sound itself, the word is logos, right? So I'm sure all these have connections, not just to the physical, uh, but also the astral and other realms. All right, so that's that. I think we've got uh, everything there. Let's see if there are any hands raised. No hands raised. Okay, so we'll end with a prayer. Yes, right. you can do it. No, no, no. no you yeah. do it. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's close our eyes and end the session. Inhale and exhale. Feel gratitude, respect, and love to God, to all the great beings, to our teacher, and all the higher masters and teachers out there. 
to the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, to our beloved and respected teacher, Grand Master Chua Koksui, to Lord Maha Guruji Mele, to Buddha Kwanyan, Buddha Sakyamuni, to Gautama Buddha, to Lord Shiva, Lord Ganesha, to the Lord Christ, to Yehoshua Ba Miriam, to the angels and great teachers and masters of theosophy, to the angels and beings of knowledge, light and power, to our soul and divine self, to the angels and beings of communication, our respective internet. Thank you all for your great, great blessings. Thank you, tremendous love, guidance. Thank you for giving us greater clarity, for the light of wisdom and understanding. Thank you for tremendous patience with us. Help us to continue to absorb and assimilate this knowledge and use it to become better divine instruments in your service. With thanks and in full faith, so be it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. With gratitude, with respect and love. Atma Namaste, everybody. Namaste. I think some of you, when you do twin hearts or so, you rotate this way. Before we say one level of truth, we say the crown chakra rotates. <laughs> um, and because of that, you're rotating, but actually everything is rotating in your body. Okay. Correct. So, so thank you so much. Uh, I think one hour is enough. It's a lot of information. <laughs> <laughs> so please do think about it. Mull over what we've said. Uh, hopefully it sinks in and makes more sense. Sure. Uh, if you have clarification and doubts, uh, we can look at that as well. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Atma Namaste. Enjoy Bye. your evening. And we'll see sure. you on Wednesday. Right. Thank you. Atma Namaste. No. Bye. Right, I need to stop this. Thank you, everyone. Ending the meeting for all. Bye bye.